Welcome everybody to Copyright 101 at Harmony University. My name is Janice Bain. I am the manager of copyright and licensing over at Harmony Hall. With me today is Scott Harris, manager of Arranger and Repertoire. He's also our publications editor. We're going to be talking about copyright. We're going to be talking about just the ba very basics. We could go in deep and spend all week talking about copyright, but we're not going to do that today. We're going to do a very brief overview. We're going to talk about the permission to arrange process, and then we're going to take your questions. Part one, copyright basics. Da, 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 da. Copyright. It's a form of legal protection that's automatically provided to the authors of original works. They have essentially four rights under U.S. copyright law. The person who owns a copyright or the creator does have the right to reproduce their work in copies or sound recordings. They have the right to prepare derivative works. That's what we do a lot here at the Barbershop Harmony Society. We use other people's work. Does anyone have a cell phone I could, I could uh, just borrow for just a second? Would it be okay if I took this and threw it against the wall? Sure. Can I throw it on the floor and stomp on it? I think I want to paint it pink. That's one of my favorite colors. I think I want to descramble everything and load my own wonderful programs on it. Now, how would you feel about that? Not too good. Okay. This is a very rough analogy of how copyright holders feel about us using their songs illegally. When you own something and it's yours, you want to take care of it for the most part, and you want permission for, you want to give permission for other people to use it. I'm not going to do that to your phone today, but I just Thank wanted to, much. I was going to bring a pretend one and throw it against the wall and, and do some shock, some shock uh, antics, but maybe for the next year we'll do that. Uh, the copyright holder also has the right to distribute copies or sound recordings of their work to the public, and they have the right to perform. We do a large amount of that. And that's why you, your, your groups have to submit ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC report forms, and so can for those of you who reside in Canada. What is protected by copyright? All of these things. Everything from literary works to architecture, blueprints. What is not protected? Unfixed works that have not been recorded in a tangible fixed form. You got a great song in your brain, but you haven't fixated it. You haven't put it on sheet music. You haven't recorded it. Can't be copyrighted. Work in the public domain. We'll talk about that real briefly. Anything published before 1923 under the current law in the United States. Things like titles, names, short phrases, and slogans. Now these may not be able to be copyrighted, but they may be able to be trademarked or service marked or patented, that sort of thing. Those are different permissions. We're only going to talk about copyright today. Ideas and facts. Got a great idea for a song? You can't copyright it. Why? Because it's not fixated into a song format. Processes and symptoms. I don't know if anybody still knows what the Dewey Decibel System is. I do, but uh, those are in the public domain as our federal government works. What is public domain? Generally, anything that's been published after 1923 until the present day is under copyright. Now, sometimes I'll do a clearance for a U.S. and Canada, a uh, North American clearance for a group, and they reside in Canada. 
I automatically get the U.S. clearance on the arrangement, but then the copyright holder comes to me and says, uh, just to let you know, this song is in the public domain in Canada because each territory has their own set of copyright laws. So then I'll inform the Canadian group and they'll go, yippee! There's still a fee due, but just not as much. Okay. Who can own a copyright? The author or the creator? Duh. The author or creator's heirs if, sadly enough, the author or creator passes away. The creators of a joint work. So Scott and I write a song together. We get into the room. We write the song. We finish it. We agree, hopefully before we leave the room, that we're going to share this 50-50, 75-25. I came up with the title, so I'm just going to get 10. He's going to get 90% of the song. So a song is kind of like a pie that can be divided into at least 100 shares or more. It can even be divided, split between that. Anyone who the author or creator has given or assigned their copyright. Now, this happens a lot in Nashville. We have a lot of songwriters who are under agreement with a publishing company. They assign the publishing part of their copyright over to the company so that the company can take care of them. They give them a recoupable salary that comes out of their income. But they retain their writer's share of the song, so the publisher will account to them some income from the sales of their songs. That's called an assignment of copyright. And that's why when we have to go to Hal Leonard or Alfred, or Music Sales Corp, or even just a copyright holder directly, like Sony ATV or somebody like that. Um, they've been assigned the rights to tell me yes or no regarding the print rights, or regarding the use in a video. The way I like to think about this is, is that every song that's written is worth 200%. There's a writer's 100%, and then there's the publishing 100%. So there's a writer share and a publishing share. So the writer share could be split between Janice and I, 50-50. But let's say that we work, that we're staff writers for the same publishing company. Well, the publishing is 100% owned by another entity. But publishing share, songwriting share equals one song. As the copyright holder of a song, if you're the composer or you're the arranger of a public domain work, you can do whatever you want to with it. You can give it freely to the world. You can charge them $100 a copy. It's totally up to you. And when that is assigned to another entity, you're assigning, you're giving away some rights, and you don't have that voice anymore. So those of you who create original works, keep that in mind, that when you do assign that copyright over to somebody, that um, you're going to be losing some authority. How long does copyright protection last? As you can tell, it gets a little weedy. It's pretty, pretty crazy. It just depends on when it was uh, published, um, if it was a joint work, if it was a work for hire, that sort of thing. Congress has updated the copyright laws over the, over the, over the years. In 1976, right, Janice is what we're, we're under right now. Uh, so that kind of put the baseline for everything, all the rules that we operate under here. But before that, things were a bit, a bit strange, <laughs> which is what this outlines. So, what can happen if I use someone's song without their permission? This is federal prison, or just some examples. Uh, federal prison's nice. I haven't been there. I've heard it's nice. Um, you know, three meals a day, cable, place to work out. But uh, you, you don't have a lot of freedom there. And that's where you go if the judge, if you have willful infringement. So this is how serious it can get, folks. It's both a civil and a criminal act. You can be charged, if the judge is mean enough and how willful it is, up to $150,000 per occurrence per copy of the sheet music, per instance. $30,000 statutory damages regardless of act, actual damages, all of your profits if you have any, and then you're gonna have to pay all of the attorney's fees and possible imprisonment in that lovely place that I showed you. That's just one of the federal prisons. It's not, all, it's not the only place. So when you're in doubt about using someone else's song, keep calm and ask permission. All you, can, all you have to do is ask. They may say no, that's the risk. Under the law, print rights, arrangement rights, and video rights are not compulsory. That means you have to get a license and you have to get permission. Under audio recordings, all you have to do is secure the license with the copyright holder or their agent, such as the Harry Fox Agency. It is compulsory under the law. Once the first recording of that song gets out there in audio land, then you can make a cover recording of that song. You don't have to ask permission, but you do have to account to the copyright holder and secure a license. Now I put this guy down here. This is Dean Kay. 
He is a fabulous colleague of mine. I've known him for years. He's on, he was on the board of directors of ASCAP. I think he still is. But he is a copyright holder. And he doesn't have Hal Leonard handle his print. He doesn't have Alfred, Music Sales, or anybody on the outside. He handles his catalog on his own. I email Dean K at earthlink.net to get my permissions. He owns Melikiniki, the Hawaiian Christmas song. He owns um, Jingle Bells, the K. Thompson version that Andy Williams Dun, 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 that one, uh, as well as some other fabulous songs. So I go to Dean and I get my permissions from him. I don't go through, and I mean, he's, you know, he's got some fabulous copyrights. So sometimes I put him there because he's the prime example of the independent copyright holder that you have to contact directly. And sometimes, and usually, they have the fastest turnaround. That's what the joy is on that. And then the other side of that coin is they're going, if they're kind of inexperienced, they're like, I have no idea what you're asking me for. And so I have to send them an explanation of what we do. And I also just send them a, a, one of our licenses. It's like, this is one of our templates if you want to use it. And they're like, oh, OK, send me a check. So anyway, this is, can be a little bit overwhelming. But do not fear. That's applause. <laughs> do not fear. The Barbershop Harmony Society is here to help you, to assist you. So you're familiar with this song from the Beach Boys. We're going to go through the cl clearance process real quick to show you how, how this is done. So anyway, we're going to clear Little St. Nick by Brian White and Mike Love. Up here on the top, I, want, I need to know the, t the song title. I know this is a no-brainer. Don't make the title up. Don't take the hook from the song and put that as the song title. Find some sheet music, do a Google search. Wikipedia is really good. Uh, YouTube is really good. I need the actual title. If there are alternative titles, that is very helpful because sometimes they're, they're known as different things like um, uh, darkness in the delta. Well, it's actually parentheses when it's darkness on the delta, but we all know it is darkness on the delta. Hey, Janice, why am I going to fill out this form? So the reason why you're going to fill out this form is because you have an arrangement that needs to be cleared. You have been commissioned to create Little St. Nick. They need four copies for the group. It's a quartet. They're either going to sing it in contests or they're just going to go around in the community and sing it. But the problem is, is that they've, got, they've commissioned you to create the arrangement. The arrangement is fixated into sheet music format and therefore it needs to be cleared. If the guys or gals are learning the song by ear through a recording from a learning track, that's perfectly fine under the law. Once it gets fixated into notation, that is where this comes in. When you create a learning CD or a learning track and secure a mechanical license from the copyright holder for the audio recording, the arrangement right is included in the mechanical license. So a group can take an, a learning track, like one of our learning tracks, and learn an arrangement and legally sing it. That's perfectly fine. But if the arrangement, if you take the arrangement and you notate it and it's in sheet music and you're going to make copies, that's what this, this is for. That's what this permission is for. The next thing I need to know after the song title are the composers. I don't need Smith and Jones. I need Herbert Smith. I need Judy Jones. I need the first and last names. And you can usually find this from a Google search and definitely off of the reference sheet music. The next thing I need to know, and this is kind of a new thing for us since our new deal with Hal Leonard, is I need to know the name of the group, the name of the quartet, the name of the chorus. If it's a chorus, I need to know the director's name. If it's a quartet, just one of the singers. Usually lead or tenor, it's fine, but I'm not prejudiced against baritone or bass since I'm a baritone myself. Okay. The reason why that we need this is if the song is controlled by Hal Leonard for print rights, the license will be specific to your group. It's not going to be a general license where the society can take your arrangement and put it up on the website for sale. All of that is going away. But if that, it doesn't mean that you can't get clearance for them. It just means you have to get clearance for them. Just in case, I do need your quartet name or your chorus name or ensemble name. If this is just a general clearance, be prepared for me to come back to you and go, are you just arranging this and it's not ready to be distributed yet? Because if it is a Hal Leonard copyright, and I'll be able to find that pretty quickly, find out pretty quickly, I will not be able to clear it for you. You will have to wait. So that's where you as an arranger or a group will need to kind of advertise that there's like, hey, I've done this new arrangement of Little St. Nick. I don't have anybody singing it yet. Would you like to clear it and use it? Be the first. This is a way for you to promote your arrangement products. 
Okay, um, after that I will need to know the arranger's name because that will be required for the license. And the voicing. Each of the voicings are licensed separately now in most cases. So if it's a male, high voice, low voice, and mixed voice, I'll have to clear. If you need all three of those, that's going to be three clearances, three fees. Okay. Sometimes the, the independent um, copyright holders like Dean Kay, he's, he's totally fine with us doing whatever voicing we want and as many copies. It just depends on what the license says. The number of copies needed, you will get a minimum of four from Hal Leonard, um, five from Alfred, and five from Music Sales, and typically all other copyright holders. Um, and then you, you, by law, you must have one for each singer using the arrangement. So please let me know that. If the arrangement's for contest, I only need to know that if we're on a time deadline. Uh, right now, Alfred copyrights I usually get within just a few days. Um, Hal Leonard is taking now about 15 days, and it used to be three to six months. So they're turning around things a lot quicker for us now. Payment information, please note that anything that you include on this will not be charged or processed until the license is in place. I email you the total and you agree to move forward. You may cancel a clearance at any time. If after I notify you of the clearance and you decide you don't want to move forward, there's a $25 cancellation fee. Uh, we do offer um, credit card payments, PayPal, check and money order. The check and money order is probably going to be going away soon, um, so be prepared to provide a bank card. So if we were clearing um, Little St. Nick, the first thing I would do is I would start looking to see who in the world controls the song. And I usually use ASCAP.com, BMI, and CSAC to start with. So if you're looking up a song, we're going to try ASCAP first. And they just have a search engine. We know that Love is one of them, and he's not the performer. I could put Beach Boys there. Okay, I agree. Okay, this song is not controlled by ASCAP. Okay, ASCAP is a performing rights organization. The writers and the publishers of this song are not with ASCAP. So then I would go to BMI and do the same thing. Well, you've, you've got three uh, PROs to choose from, and 99% of the songs you're looking for are going to be covered under those three. So you just got to kind of have to go hunt, hunt in the search. So from searching on BMI.com, Little St. Nick is controlled by BMI. So I'm like, yes, I found it. Okay, here are the writers, Mike Love, Brian Wilson. The publisher, this is the copyright holder, Irving Music. Okay, who in the world is Irving Music? So I click on it, and it gives me the address. Now, I know from my experience that this is controlled by Hal Leonard, but it could be that I don't know who Irving Music is from, from Adam. So I would go to their website, or I would write them, call them, fax them, contact them with the permission to arrange. And they would probably tell me, I'm sorry, our print rights are controlled by Hal Leonard. Please contact them at halleonard.com. And then I would contact Hal Leonard and get clearance for that. When you register a song, you fill out the form, and you're gonna, there's a space to put alternate titles so little saint nick s-a-i-n-t s-t period like you, you however many ways that you can think of that somebody might interpret the song you would put that in there yeah that's up to how, how it gets set up a lot of times i'm surprised that st didn't didn't show up because that's a pretty popular song yeah uh, rhythm of love great example 77 titles or 77 songs and as we learned previously song titles are not copyrightable so you can write a song called Rhythm of Love. Everyone in this room can do that. This is where the composer information on your request form is so important. So that I, I, I need to clear the right song. I had someone submit a permission to arrange just the other day that just had the title. Well, he didn't know who wrote it. I think it was recorded by Frank Sinatra, maybe. I really try to empower you to do your homework so that you know how to do this. <laughs> This is how we treat them in, at the society, okay? If you come to me with a parody arrangement clearance, it's like you want to do Rhythm of Love, but you want to put parody lyrics to it. 
If we already have the arrangement rhythm of love that you're going to use, you may proceed by paying your per copy fees, just order the, the sheet music. The parody lyrics have to stay on another sheet of paper. If this is a brand new arrangement that has parody lyrics, those have to be on a separate sheet of paper. They cannot be incorporated into the arrangement. Nine, 99% of the time, I cannot clear parody arrangements as they're fixated into the notation. But the live performance of parody is, is protected under the First Amendment. And when you create an arrangement of a public domain work, you are the copyright holder in that arrangement. So you can sell it. You can do whatever you want to with it. You can submit it to us and we'll work out a deal with you to pay you as a copyright holder, or you can sell it yourself, or both. What we, the licenses that we secure are non-exclusive, which means that you can do what you want to, we do what we want to, as long as we've got an agreement in place. We thank you for your time today. You. Uh, you can reach us at library at barbershop.org. For those of you wanting published works, music pubs at barbershop.org.